we do have huge news for everybody today. Uh, it is official. We're going to be doing our first bar meetup at the end of November. It is a Ranger Islander game. It's going to be in Hicksville. Uh, it's a bar that I frequent plenty of times. So I uh, can't wait to actually get together, meet everybody. Yes, it will be a, a little bit of an NFL Sunday, but there's no interesting games. And let's be honest, Rangers Islanders, that's what we really are all going to want to see anyway. But we got to talk about that said Rangers because it's always the good and the bad with this team. So we have, uh, there's a loss to Calgary last week. They get three days off and then they shut out Columbus. They beat Seattle in Seattle for their first one. And it looked like they had another two points, but they coughed up a two goal lead in the third period. Phil, your thoughts on last night's game. I'll play it again. Uh, it just seems like there's no improvement in the team. It just doesn't seem like they're they're getting it. Um, they don't un, they don't seem to just get the fact that you need to play a full sixty minutes of hockey, and there's just never a full sixty minute effort from this team. They, I mean, they finally had some sort of consistent offensive zone uh, possession time and and you know chances. Because in a lot of their other games, if you if you really watch, they're getting chances and they're converting on them, and they're usually off the rush. It's never at the ex- expense of sustained offensive zone pressure. So it was good to see them get those shifts in there, but they still played badly in their own zone. They were still outplayed. They were still outworked, again, by a lesser team. Uh, Vancouver has not been good. So to, to really – to get outworked by a team like Vancouver after getting outworked handily by an even worse team. Seattle's not good news for this team heading into a part of their schedule where they have three games against Edmonton, Calgary, who wiped the floor with them the last time. And then Florida, who's one of the best teams in the league right now. So I don't care what's going on with their coaching controversy. They're still a far better team than the Rangers a far better team. And if they come in there into those three games with efforts like the ones that they've had in these games, they're going to get smacked around. So they need to, they need to step things up and, and the offense needs to start scoring two goals, a game or less is, is anemic and it's not good enough. I think it's time to shake up the lines and uh, to his credit, Gerard Gallant isn't throwing anyone under the bus. He is trying to be as upbeat as possible with this. If you heard it in the press conferences, before but uh this is really going to there is an adjustment period we know this he's trying to put his stamp on the team and yeah when you're going to be seeing yeah you're going to be seeing one of the best offensive players ergo teams in the league this uh tomorrow night actually and then uh getting uh, the the Calgary Flames, who look like they've adjusted well after a new coach, and <laughs> once again Anthony gets better looking. Uh, it's it's just it's it's just the way. Uh, I I don't know if I can even duplicate that look anymore, but the uh, it's it's something that they need to adjust. They need to get back on track. Which I was going to lead Anthony to this question. Oh, good. He's back. Okay, good. So, Anthony, I asked you this question last week about Ilya Sorokin. But right now, is it all on Igor Sestorkin for the New York Rangers? Hey, I mean, definitely seems that way. Um, you know, obviously, he had the shot at Columbus. He was great. Uh, he was really good in the game against Seattle. And uh, he was great in Vancouver again last night. It's becoming the story. Um, and, you know, I'll say this. You know, for the most part, um, it's good enough for them to win. But, you know, finally, last night, he was met with a goalie who was at least at his level in Thatcher Demko in this particular game. Um, and Demko, you know, stole really stole it. I thought stole the game for Vancouver in that crazy sequence in overtime there um, at the end. But, you know, yeah, you know, you, you can't it's it's good to have an elite goalie. Um, obviously, it, it's one of the biggest wins you can have as an NHL club. Um, but when you consistently essentially rely on that said goalie to, to play, you know, worldly, eventually it's going to catch up to you. Um, 
and it's also good to, it's also going to create a lot more pressure on Igor's shoulders that he's feeling night in and night out you know and that the grind of a you know long season it'll start to wear at you so um you know right now uh <laughs> the rangers really need to give him a little more support um so he does so he doesn't have to feel okay well if i let in you know two goals you know maybe maybe we're going to lose now so um he's been fantastic Absolutely fantastic, but the Rangers got to give him more help. They got to give him more goal support, um, and they got to be stronger defensively because you know it's again it's nice to have your goalie make these ten bell saves and and keep you in it with saves when you're under siege, but it's not prime. So the Rangers Does, need to kind of you know help him out a little bit. Do these conversations sound awfully familiar? Oh Rangers? yeah. Because I, I, I recall having these conversations for 15 years with <laughs> Henrik Lundqvist. The same damn conversations over and over again. The play in front of him is unsustainable. You can't win against better teams like this. You got to have better production from your defense. Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba have just been uh, – they should be fired into the sun with the way that they've played. And Patrick Nemitz is even worse than they are. So – I'll I'll go one better. I'm I'm done seeing Jared Tenorti. Yeah, I'm done with him. You know, I'm done, he, he I'm done with that too. Game. Yeah, we we tried that experiment. It's it's, it's that's done. So um, the, there are other positives that have come out of this. Yes. Last night, goal and an assist for Artemi Panarin. Goal and an assist for Mika Zibanejad. Another two assists for Adam Fox. Uh, uh, Chris Kreider scored on a shot this week. Dilk will be happy about that. Uh, and it's just, that's where it's, uh, where Philk is alluding to, is it time that the Rangers split up Truba and Miller? I think it's gotta, it's gotta happen. It's gotta happen. This, this pairing has been awful. If you look at the analytics in, in terms of like game scores and, uh, go, goals, uh, goal saved, uh, or expected goals against, I'm sorry. <laughs> It, it just the <laughs> they're so bad, they're so bad, and Jacob Truba, you know what? I, I get it. Like he can't carry a pairing. Him and Josh Morrissey were great together in Winnipeg because they really complemented one another well, and they were both experienced defensemen. Jacob Truba can't carry Keandre Miller, and, and the consistent rookie mistakes that Keandre Miller continues to make in his second season, like letting forwards get behind him. Um, playing, waving with his stick too much, not playing the body enough. Uh, I mean, getting caught out of position is another thing that Keandre Miller is just seems to, I don't, I don't know what it is with him, but he continues to do this. And Jacob Truba can't carry that. So I, I would try to see if Keandre Miller can work with Adam Fox. Um, I would put maybe Ryan Lindgren with Jacob Truba or, I mean, get Nils Lundqvist, you know, in there and, and maybe move Patrick Nemeth around with somebody, maybe, maybe, I don't know, Tr Nemeth and Truba. I don't know. I, I really don't. I don't like the idea of Patrick Nemeth playing top four minutes, but something's got to change with these pairings because Fox and Lindgren are phenomenal together. And the other two pairings are just terrible. So I'm going to redirect that entire philosophy and everything you were just saying right back down to the bottom box, because Anthony, you know from your experience with the Islanders, they you need consistent D pairing and guys that know where they're going to be. So when you decide to shake them up, I mean that that's a tectonic flake if you sh if you uh, split up Lindgren and Fox, right? Yeah, um, but you know what? I mean, look look to the Islanders. They've they've split up Pelic and Pollock this year because of you know because of the struggles of, of Chara and Green. They they couldn't they couldn't stay the course with that pair because Trotz felt that splitting them up, um, you know, helped out the other pairings by always having, at least trying to have one of them on the ice, um, you know, at all times. So the Rangers could, could definitely split up Fox and Lingren, um to that, to that point. Um, but as far as Tr Truba, I mean, I, I've said um, really from the get go, like Truba's making $8 million um, and he's certainly not playing like an $8 million defenseman in any, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and with, you know, the Rangers now with Fox's extension and them having, you know, five players account for roughly $44 million against the cap. 
Um, you can't have Jacob Truba making eight million. I mean, there's a come there's gonna no. come to a point where you're gonna have to f- try to find a way to move him. Because with that much money tied up in five guys and he's playing the way he is, it's not really good for the rest of the, the way you want to construct the rest of your team. But um for now, yeah, to try something different, try to give him a boost, a different pairing. And it doesn't help. He's playing with a younger player in Keandre Miller, who's struggled, I would say, mightily since the second half of last season. So um, I don't know if the two of them really complement each other well at this point. No. The problem is then you have Tenorti and Nemeth who are both, you know, you know, poor defensemen. So there's not much you could do aside from, yes, yeah, splitting up Fox and Lingren and, and, you know, kind of putting it in a mixed bag and seeing what you can come up with. And you know what? If the, the, the part of the problem with him was he was brought to be a number one, quickly lost his job on the power play. And then Fox took over the number one defenseman spot. I mean, it should make him better, but he's making all that money. And I mean, that, that just puts a target on you. But once again, Philk, one of the stories of the, of the team, they can't win a damn face off. And yes, I said, damn for that. They actually went up in the rankings because someone else got worse. You know what? And I've been saying this for a while. You, you, you have to – face-offs aren't an overrated stat. There are so many younger fans that think that face-offs are overrated. Face-offs equal possession, and possession helps you win games. And, yes, I know possession is not the only thing that helps you win games. You obviously have to get shots on net. You have to score. Mm-hmm. You have to keep your puck out of the, uh, keep the puck out of your own net. But you can't be on a power play and lose the initial face-off every single time and for once they won the initial face off they had their configurations different and they went to artemi panarin for a one-timer from the point and scored last night off of it yeah right off the opening right off the opening face off of that power play and it was like i felt like i was in the upside down from stranger things like what was going on here like was <laughs> a monster about to come out and eat me and end my life or something like that and i was never going to come back I just I didn't understand what was going on there for a second because I hadn't seen that in God knows how long. I felt like since maybe Leach and Zubov were a pairing, but um, yeah, or, or or when Messier was uh, taking more draws. And yeah. for people that think faceoffs are overrated, one of the reasons why the Rangers won the Cup in '94 is because they got Craig McTavish, and it wasn't because he was a great goal scorer. No, so he wasn't brought in for that purpose. I mean, he was the one who took the final faceoff and won the final faceoff for them. But the the point that I want to make here is that you cannot be the 30th of 32nd or the the, the 30th of 32 teams in the NHL in terms of faceoff percentage and expect to win games because you can't sustain possession that way. That means that the other team is going to have the puck a lot more than you do. And the fact that they have six wins in 10 games, despite being, Last in the NHL, sure, it's a good thing in a way because oh, you know, third to last, yeah, third to last. Sorry, and they could get better, but and and, and Rich, yeah, I, I I I said this I think in the video about Adam. Oh no, no, that was the comment I was looking for. Sorry, sorry, John. But um, hello, John. He did say the same thing too. Yeah, I I did I did say that yesterday too, John. And nice belt. That. Yeah, so you, it's actually good that you made that comment, John. But Rich, yeah, I, I talked about hiring Yannick Perot and seeing what Yannick Perot is doing because the, the Washington Capitals brought in Michael Pekka to help, and Michael Pekka helped them. So why couldn't the Rangers do the same thing and go get someone like Yannick Perot or, or someone like that to help them win faceoffs? You know? Wait a second. They brought in Michael Pekka to Washington? Yeah. I mean, that's where Peter Lavalier coached. Didn't those two not get along, Anthony? Who oh, did? Pekka oh, yeah. and Lavalier. Him and Pekka that didn't get along? Uh, I mean, I I don't know. That's what was reported. I, I don't know how much truth there was to it. I, I know there was the whole Yashin Pekka dynamic in the locker room, but I I don't I don't know exactly what, what transpired there. All right. Well, I guess the only way to look at it though for the Rangers is they got all these problems and they they're still getting points. They've only left five points on the board so far this season or now it's six. But that's that that's the only way to look at it right now. And they're going to get better. They're going to score more goals. We all know this. And that's what's going to happen. Give so, me Zach Jones already, please. Yeah. Oh, 
And uh, so if you got any more suggestions, how you would improve the New York Rangers right now, throw them all down in the comments below. We're going to move on. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.